So we are going to find the integral from 0 to 1 of the natural log of x squared plus 1 divided by x plus 1 dx. And I hope you're ready because this is going to be a wild ride. Now to start off, I see this natural log of something plus 1 in the numerator. And I know that if I put a t right here and let i of t equal this integral of natural log of tx squared plus 1, what happens if I differentiate the inside with respect to t is that this natural log goes away and we get a rational expression. But in addition, because this t is multiplied by everything except for the plus 1, if we plug in t equals 0, then we'll get the natural log of 0 plus 1, which is just 0 across the whole integral. And that's going to really help us out when we finally solve this problem by integrating back to our original result. Now, as you may have guessed from what I've said here, we're going to use Feynman's technique in order to evaluate this integral which means that we take both sides of this equation and differentiate with respect to t. So on this side we get i prime of t, and we're going to take the derivative with respect to t on the outside of this integral, but because of Feynman's rule for differentiation under the integral sign, we can actually bring that differential into the integral. So we get the derivative with respect to t of this inside. Now 1 over x plus 1 is a constant with respect to t, so we can pull that out. And then we get the partial derivative with respect to t of the natural log of tx squared plus 1. And now we just have to figure out what this part is right here. And that's fairly easy. First of all, if we use the chain rule, we're going to get an x squared on the top from the tx squared term. And then the denominator becomes tx squared plus 1. So now that we're here, we need a way to simplify this integral and turn it into something we know how to solve. And in order to do that, we're going to want to do some partial fraction decomposition. So what we're going to do is write that x squared over x plus 1 times tx squared plus 1 is equal to a over x plus 1 plus bx plus c over tx squared plus 1. Now we can't use the cover-up method for the bx plus c component, but we can use it for the a because it's a linear term. So if we want x plus 1 to equal 0, then we're going to need x to equal negative 1. So we go over to this right here, cover up x plus 1, and we plug in negative 1. So negative 1 squared is 1, and then we get t times negative 1 squared is 1 again, plus 1. So 1 over t plus 1 is going to be our a term. So we can plug that right in here, 1 over t plus 1, and for the rest of this, we're going to have to multiply through by our denominator and then solve for b and c. So I've multiplied out our whole expression by this denominator, and now we need to figure out b and c. To start out, let's look at the constant terms. On the left side here, we only have an x squared, which means that our constant term is going to be a 0. On this side, we have 1 over t plus 1 and c being our constant terms. So we have that 1 over t plus 1 plus c has to equal 0, and therefore c is negative 1 over t plus 1. To solve for b, we can look at the x terms in this equation, the linear terms, and notice that there's also no x on the left side of this equation here, which means that the only x's are this bx plus cx, meaning that b plus c equals 0, and therefore b is negative c. So if c is negative 1 over t plus 1, then b has to be positive 1 over t plus 1. And with that, we're done with partial fraction decomposition, so we can plug in our values and get to integrating. All right, so I've written out our b and c terms into this equation right here, and now what we need to do is take the integral from 0 to 1 of what we got over here. So we're going to get the integral from 0 to 1 of this whole thing, and now it's time to split this up so that we get three different integrals that we can each solve, which was the purpose of partial fraction decomposition. So we're going to get the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 over x plus 1 dx, and then with a 1 over t plus 1 in front. Then we're going to get 1 over t plus 1 times the integral of x over tx squared plus 1. Then we're going to get minus 1 over t plus 1 times the integral of 1 over tx squared plus 1 dx. So let's go through each of these integrals individually. To start out, this one's going to be nice and easy. We're going to get the natural log of x plus 1 evaluated at 1 and 0. 
and that's going to be the natural log of 1 plus 1 is 2, and then the natural log of 0 plus 1, the natural log of 1, is just 0. So this is just going to be 1 over t plus 1 times the natural log of 2. For the second integral, we're just going to need to do a basic substitution. So we let u equal tx squared plus 1, then du is 2tx dx. So when we do this integral, we're going to get, we have an x dx on the inside, so x dx is going to be du divided by 2t. So we're actually going to get another 2t term out here in the denominator, times t plus 1, and then we're going to get the integral of 1 over u du, which is just going to be the natural log absolute value of u. Then we're going to get t times 1 squared plus 1, t plus 1, and then again, 0 plus 1 is 1. If we do this, we get natural log t plus 1, and then natural log of 1 is again 0. So we can ignore the lower bound, and we're just going to be left with the natural log absolute value of t plus 1. That's great. We have one more integral over here. And to help us out, I've written this fact here. The integral of dx over x squared plus a squared equals 1 over a times the inverse tangent of x over a. But in this case, our answer here, our integral, isn't quite in that form. So we're going to need to play with it a little bit to get it to where we want. We want this x squared to be by itself. So what we can do is factor out this t. So we get t times x squared plus, well this 1 is going to become a 1 over t, because 1 over t times t is going to give us our 1 back. But we want something squared. So instead of writing 1 over t, I'm going to write 1 over square root t squared, just like that. And now this is in exactly the form that we want when we're doing this integral up here. So when we do this integral, we're going to get minus 1 over, then we have t times t plus 1, and then we also have 1 over a, but that's going to be 1 over 1 over root t. So that's going to come up to the top, become a root t up there. Then we get the inverse tangent of, we have x, and then again divided by 1 over root t becomes multiplied by root t at 1 and 0. So we can evaluate this here. The inverse tangent of 0 is 0 again, and then we have the inverse tangent plugging 1 into this x. We're just going to get the inverse tangent of root t. So this is our final answer here, the inverse tangent of root t for this integral. And then we can simplify this a little bit because we have a root t on the top divided by a t. Well, that's going to be the same as doing 1 over the square root of t. So we do 1 over uh, square root of t times t plus 1, just like this. So here's our answer, but you'll notice that there are a lot of t's in here, and our original question didn't start out with any t's, and that's because this integral is not our final step. Oh no, what we're going to do now is get back to the original i of t, because this, this right here is i prime of t. This is what we got when we took the derivative on both sides. What we want to get at the end is i of 1, because that's the natural log of x squared plus 1 over x plus 1. So we want to take the integral here, and we'll have 1 as the upper bound, but we're going to need a lower bound, and that's what this i of 0 equals 0 is for. That's why this plus 1 is so important, because it allows us to take the lower bound of 0 on this side and know that i of 0 is 0 without having to worry about that. So now, we can just integrate with respect to t on both sides, and whatever we get when we integrate from 0 to 1, that will be our final solution. So I've taken our equation on the bottom here, cleaned it up a little bit, and written it right up here. Remember that i of 0 equals 0, so this integral is just going to evaluate to i of 1. And now it's time to get cracking at each of the parts of our integral right here. To start off, this part is again going to be very easy, because we're going to get natural log 2, and then this part, integrating 1 over t plus 1, we just get natural log absolute value of t plus 1 at 1 and 0. Go through the same process as before, we get natural log of 1 plus 1 is 2, and then natural log of 0 plus 1 is 0. 
So this becomes natural log 2 times natural log 2, or natural log 2 squared. Now for the second part here, we have two things in the denominator. And you know what happens when we get two things in the denominator. It means we do partial fraction decomposition. So we're going to pull that off on this integral right here. So let's see what we get. We want a over t plus b over t plus 1. And let's figure out what each of these things is. First of all, for t, if we want t to be 0, we set t equals 0. Go up here, 1 over 0 plus 1 just becomes 1. So our a is just going to be 1. And then for b, t plus 1 equals 0 means t is negative 1. So we go up here, 1 over negative 1 is negative 1. So this is just going to be a minus 1 over t plus 1. And we can split this up into two integrals right here. So we're going to get the integral from 0 to 1 of natural log t plus 1 over t dt. And then we're going to get the integral from 0 to 1 of natural log t plus 1 over t plus 1 dt. And then this should be a minus because b was negative 1. So let's look at each of these parts. First, right here, we see a natural log t plus 1 divided by just a t by itself. And this means it's time to bust out the Taylor series. So the natural log of t plus 1, we know we can write as the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n plus 1 times t to the n over n. So this is the natural log Taylor series of 1 plus t. But notice we have a divided by t here which means our t to the n is going to become t to the n minus 1. If we want to integrate this, we can use Scubini's theorem to switch the sum and the integral. So this integral is going to get dragged to the inside. And when we do this, negative 1 to the n plus 1, that's a constant. 1 over n, that's a constant with respect to t. So we just have to do the power rule on t to the n minus 1. So we're going to get t to the n over n. That's going to be the result of this. Then we have another n on the bottom. That's n squared. We want to evaluate this at 1 and 0. Well, 1 to the n is 1, and 0 to the n is 0. So in fact, we're just going to get 1 minus 0 on the top. So that's just a 1. Now we have to evaluate this sum. We have the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n plus 1 over n squared. So this is going to be 1 over 1 squared minus 1 over 2 squared plus 1 over 3 squared, and so on. And I've made a separate video on this, so you can check the link in the description. This actually evaluates to pi squared over 12. So that is going to be the answer to this part here. I dropped the 1 half at the beginning here, so we're going to get 1 half 1 half, and 1 half of pi squared over 12, we're going to get pi squared over 24 as the answer to this first integral. So I've written this pi squared over 24 up here, and now it's time for the second integral, which is going to be much easier, because we have a natural log of t plus 1 on the top that we can nicely substitute. Because when we take the derivative, we get du equals 1 over t plus 1 dt, which is just sitting pretty here for us to use. So we're going to get minus 1 half, the integral of. Natural log of 0 plus 1 is still natural log of 1 is 0. And then on the top, we get natural log of 1 plus 1 is 2. And this becomes a u. And we have 1 over t plus 1 dt is du. So now we're going to have negative 1 half times 1 half u squared at natural log of 2 and 0. 0 squared is 0, so we don't have to worry about the lower bound. We're just going to get natural log 2 squared. So we come up to the top here, pi squared over 24, then we have minus 1 fourth is a half times a half, natural log 2 squared. So now all we have left to do is this final integral. Notice we have an inverse tangent of something other than t. So it's a very weird inverse trig expression, and it might seem difficult at first, but watch this u equals the inverse tangent of root t. Weird inverse trig expressions are another thing that you should always try to substitute just in case it works. And in this case, oh, it definitely works. We get du equals 
we're going to get 1 over root t squared is t plus 1. And then by the chain rule, we get times 1 over 2 root t is the derivative of the inside here, dt. So if we clean this up a little bit, multiply by 2 on both sides, we get that 2 du equals 1 over root t times t plus 1 dt. And that is our denominator. So this is going to be so easy. All we have to do is go back and plug this into our integral. So we get minus the integral. Inverse tangent of 0 is 0. Inverse tangent of 1 is pi over 4. And then we're going to get inverse tangent of root t is u. And then this all the rest of this stuff with the dt is 2 du. So we get negative u squared evaluated at pi over 4 and 0. 0 goes away, 0 squared is 0. And then we get minus pi squared over 16. And that is the result for the last integral. So we can go back up here and add in the last piece of the puzzle, minus pi squared over 16. So let's simplify this a little bit. Natural log 2 squared minus 1 fourth natural log 2 squared is 3 fourths natural log 2 squared. And now we have pi squared over 24 minus pi squared over 16. So pi squared over 24, if we multiply by 2 on the top and bottom, is the same as 2 pi squared over 48. And if we multiply by 3 on the top and bottom over here, we're going to get 3 pi squared over 48. So we have 2 pi squared minus 3 pi squared. So we'll get minus 1 pi squared over 48. And with that, we are finished. The integral from 0 to 1 of the natural log of x squared plus 1 over x plus 1 dx is 3 fourths times the natural log of 2 squared minus pi squared over 48.